What's up, YouTube? How y'all doing today? Hope y'all having a good day today. So, <clears throat> what I want to talk about today is um, building strength through individuality. You know, as I go through life, I'm noticing more and more people are, you know, clumping together and their identity is becoming more so being part of a group, so to speak, trying to fit in with said group. Not just in the LGBTQ community, but in, in, in any and all communities. Like, individuality is slowly but surely being lost, you know? And it's a sad thing because there is great strength in being an individual and in being your true self. Not being a fake version of you to fit in with some sort of group or clique or whatever it may be. I've seen a lot of that in the past couple of years and it seems to be getting worse I don't know if my eyes are just becoming more and more aware of it or if it's just social media pushing these these um, these ideologies are just being part of a group be a group be a group you know and that's not the way to be because you, you lose yourself and if you decide one time to make an individualistic decision or move or whatever you want to call it you're gone. You're out of this group, so to speak. You know? I'm talking about the psychological phenomena of tribalism. You know? And once you get kicked out of a, of a group or a tribe, if you will, you lose a big part of yourself. And that can drive you to insanity. That can drive you to a point of hurting yourself or hurting others. And that's not what we need in this world. We don't need more hurt. We need more healing. We need more strength. Strength of mind, strength of heart, strength of body. You know? And these past few months, I've been really focusing on <coughs> myself personally being a strong, like, focusing on strength. And yes, I've been building a lot of physical strength, but also, like, like mental strength. Like, you know... And it's a funny thing when you're when you when you're building strength in yourself, how that attracts others. Not just in a romantic sense, but in a platonic sense. You know? And I've been making some decisions lately that, that you know, some good decisions about turning certain things away, you know. Like, for example, I had an opp opportunity, you know, past several, several weekends to be going out and having drinks and having a good old time and doing this and doing that but like I decided against that because I'm trying to focus more on my physical health getting you know better and better sleep trying it's it's a struggle like getting good sleep these days for me is a struggle I'll tell you what I'm actually eating these little chocolate candies that are like I got them from Whole Foods they're calming and I have some some um, little candies for sleep <coughs> They help me get sleep. I'm trying more natural alternatives. I'm trying not to use sleep medication. I do have sleep meds, but I only use them for extreme cases. Because you can't be relying on sleep meds all your life. It's not good. But getting off uh, off topic, another story, another day. Focus on being you. Be yourself. You know? Live for you because you are alive in this vessel of flesh I heard that at a little concert I went to earlier you know because it's a beautiful thing you know I see people who diverge away from the group herd mentality into an individualistic mindset you know one thing I'm very appreciative of is I travel a lot for my work and just because I'm finding, trying to find my spot. Like, I'll up and go somewhere just to do it, you know, just experience and live life. And I've seen so many different individuals living their own truth, so to speak, going against the herd, against the, the, the stream, against the grain, or any other... Um, old saying you could throw in there, you know? And I resonate a lot with that because I was, I, 
you know, I used to used to like be kind of upset about my childhood, how everybody thought I was weird and made fun of me, and I was like kind of on the outskirts. But the older I get, the more appreciative of that I, I get because I vote. I've never really been part of a clique, and there's beauty in that. I'm, as I get older, there's more and more. Like I realize the beauty in that more and more because I'm always on on the outside looking in. I have an innate ability to keep myself from getting involved with like toxic groups. And yes, I am a little bit more lonelier than most, but I'm starting to find like other like minded people like myself in my travels. So here soon, I mean, actually now I don't really feel like a sense of loneliness anymore because you know, I, I had a pretty good low a couple of months ago and I've been calling up friends like my, my good friend Randy. I've been talking to him and friends like him, like friend Ray and so on and so forth. People like minded like me who are have an individualistic mindset, you know? And they're much better off as far as within themselves <coughs> having that mindset. And I see people who are thriving on that mindset. And there's some people who always lived that way. And there's some people who lived with a herd mentality. And then they diverged away from that into an individualistic mindset. That's that's why when I talk on this channel, you hear me say a lot, a lot um, the individual, this individual, this and in, that individual. I prefer to use that term because I've always wanted people to think for themselves, that to, to be individualistic, you know. It, it, it baffles me within the trans community how that is one of the most individualistic decisions you could possibly make when when you are in a, a vessel, so to speak, that does not match how you think it should be, how you feel it should be, whether you're male tra transitioning to female or vice versa. You make the ultimate decision to go against the grain, stepping out and saying, no, I am not this, I am this. Fuck you. You know, that that's the ultimate, ultimate, you know, I know I keep saying individualistic, but I don't really have better terminology. Ultimate individualistic decision. But then some of you end up messing it up by getting involved with groups within the trans community that are toxic. That say you have to be this, that, and this in order to be a woman. If you if you diverge a little bit from this, oh, you're not a woman anymore. You're or oh, you're not a man anymore. Blah blah blah. Whatever side of the fence you're on, you're not in that anymore. No, you're just gay. Go away. Toxic, toxic, bullshit. You know, and why would you? Why would you? Why would you get involved with a group that would be that way? That be that judgmental? Like you're trying to escape judgmental people or get away from judgmental people? You know. You have walked away from family. And now you're going to step into another quote-unquote family that's going to judge you? I don't know. But I see people diverge away from those groups. And they're... they're but they're, they're doing much better for themselves. They have much more peace within themselves. And I see that time and time again. You know, it's unfortunate. Now there's some people, they don't realize this until much later on in life good that they finally got there but it could have got there so much sooner so much sooner and that baffles me you make this big a decision but then you step down from that into a toxic group now, I'm not saying every single no by no means am I saying every single group within the community is toxic. By no means am I saying that, but there are some groups that are. You know? And, you know, the squeaky wheels, the one that gets the oil, that's how it is in a lot in society. I, I don't know, this is kind of a ranty video, but I just, I want people to make decisions for themselves, for the bet, for the greater good, so to speak. Being the best person you can possibly be, you know, and not being led on like, you know, people like that. I've been studying this guy, Andrew Tate, not because I want to be like him, not because I'm a fan of his, but because I'm, I'm baffled by how this guy got such a huge following. 
And it baffles me how people don't see what he's doing. He says things for effect. He says things in a loud, powerful manner for effect. To gather attention. To gather followers. Because that makes money. That's how you can make money these days off social media. And I can go on this channel. I could have went on from the very beginning. I could have went on there and said things for effect. I've not once done that because I believe in being legitimate. I hate illegitimate bullshit it irritates me and i've been studying this guy because he says a lot of good things a lot of things that are true a lot of things that he gives out good advice for people who are not financially good or, or what or so on and so forth he, he says a lot of good things but he says a lot of fucked up things too you know and there's some things he says that are contradicting he'll talk about the average guy how he has so much respect for the average man for the guy who's throwing out trash and being the garbage man. I have so much respect for him. But then you'll talk shit about people who are on planes. How they're all peasants. Like you, you'd be sitting in your fucking, you know, $10 million or $20 million, you know, private jet. And you're talking shit about people who have to fly on regular commercial airlines. You're talking shit about them. Saying, oh, you're a peasant. You're this, you're that. And... Some of this guy's followers say, well, no, he's trying to inspire you. He's, <coughs> he's trying to inspire you. He's like, no, he's not. He's asserting financial dominance over you. Hierarchy, uh, hierarchical dominance over you. He's getting a kick out of it. He can say whatever he wants to say because he doesn't have to worry about employment or this or that because he's millions upon millions of dollars of worth. And he's, he's, just, he's just flexing on everybody. Why don't people see this? And I can go on and on and on. I'll, I'll, I'll make a separate video on him another day. You know. And there's all kinds of crazy allegations against him. Whether or not they're true. Who knows. Now I'm sure most of it is true. But I'm sure there's lies in there somewhere. Because he's pissed off a lot of people. I know. But. We come back to individual mindset. Looking at yourself in the mirror. And honestly breaking down. You know, what it is you need to work on, what do you need to do better. It's so fucking difficult for people. The people did more of that, we'd have less problems. You know? Because if you don't do that, you don't self reflect, you don't analyze who you are, who you want to be, who you should be. And then it'd be easy to lead you into bullshit. Lead you astray. It'd be so easy to do. I think that's what happens to... I think people are not... Men in particular who followed Andrew Tate. They're not taking an honest look at themselves. Breaking themselves down. What it is I need to do better. This and that and the other. And they're frustrated. There's a lot of frustrating things happening in society right now. Especially in the world of dating. We all know. So... Men, both men and women need to be taking more analytical views of themselves, you know, self -medi uh, meditating on what it is they want, what they need to be, who, who they truly are. Because people who do things all the time, they think it's what they want to be, but no, they didn't actually take the time to meditate and think for themselves. Somebody told them what they need to be doing. They didn't take time to meditate. That's a sad thing. But anyways, I'm done ranting. I just want to talk about that for a minute. Being an individual. Currently working on a really really awesome video. Um gonna try and get it out soon, but I'm so busy these days. <clears throat> it's kinda hard to make time for YouTube. But um anyhow. Watching this far, thank you for watching. Hope you have a good night.